Welcome back to the channel. I'm Scotty G, back at it again. I got a message from a client a few days ago that's worth a that's worth an episode. I get this question a lot, and I just want to read it to you here real quick. Hey man, I'm really struggling right now. I'm stuck in a job I can't stand. I do IT work for a large corporation in a cubicle, and it's difficult for me to get up for work. It's making me a miserable mess. What do you suggest? I get messages like this often from clients, from people that I talk to in day-to-day -day life, uh, people in the exam room when I'm taking care of them. Many people are in this predicament. They feel trapped. They feel hopeless. They're depressed. And in some cases can actually become suicidal. I've suffered from this myself. In multiple times in my, in my life, uh, one in an hourly wage job and another time in my career which is one of the reasons why I got into this space in the first place, because I went through a very difficult time with this kind of thing, with my career, with my job, and I'm here to help you if you're suffering from this. So the first job that I had that, uh, that I went through this particular uh, process, this problem, I was in college. I believe I was a sophomore, maybe a junior in college, and it was just a summer job that I took. It was at a, a corporate hardware store, uh, it's real big in the Midwest, and I thought originally when I applied that they would put me in plumbing or in a certain uh, department because I have a lot of knowledge with home improvement, with do-it-yourself projects. I grew up with a maintenance man as a father, and I thought they were going to put me in a department, and they ended up putting me in car control, <laughs> you know, pushing carts around uh, a parking lot, uh, putting them back in the in the store, uh, running really menial jobs within the, the departments themselves, uh, running for the cashiers, and I hated it. It was an, the worst job I've ever had in my life. I had to swallow my pride every single day I went into work, and I did it for, I did it for two or three months. The straw that broke the camel's back when it came to that particular job was when a teenager, mind you, I was a college student, uh, a pre-professional student at the time, a teenager came in and basically did the same job I was doing. The kid was about 15, 16 years old. I think his parents actually dropped him off at work and he was doing the exact same thing I was doing. And that was pretty much it for me. I, I hated the job and when I saw somebody else <laughs> that had a lot less skills than I did uh, doing the same thing, I decided that was enough for me. So I immediately started looking around for a better paying job, better hours, or actually similar hours, and a job that actually will pertain to my professional career uh, and getting experience. Took about a week or so to find it. Once I had that job lined up, I gave a, a notice and I left period. That was it. I didn't stay there. I knew I had options. When it comes to hourly jobs, that was easy. Career is totally different. If you're in a career that you do not like, in a field that you do not like, in a position that you do not like, that's what we want to focus on with this particular episode mainly. So a career is a different beast entirely. For me personally, I went through a very, very difficult time in my career about five or six years ago where we were in the process of building new buildings. We were under a lot of pressure financially. And I got to the point where I did not like my job. I was forced. I felt like I was trapped. I felt very depressed and I was overworking myself. And I did get to the point where I started having suicidal thoughts and ideation. If you're there, reach out. I know a lot of guys are told or they, they feel like they don't want to talk to somebody about this kind of stuff. As I've gone on in my coaching career, uh, talking to patients, talking to uh, just people in general, once you open up to somebody that, you, that you've actually experienced this kind of stuff, you'd be surprised how many people are actually in your same shoes. At the time, I was seeing way too many patients uh, a, a typical patient day for me consists of about 24 to 25 patients a day. At the time, I was seeing near 35 to 36 patients a day. That's a lot 
for a doc. Uh, depends on your field, depends on your help, but that was a whole heck of a lot for me to, to see, and it was a lot of pressure, a lot of stress. So maximizing my patient load was financially beneficial, but not mentally beneficial at all. I found my maximum, which was the, the positive out of this whole thing. I know what it feels like to go through depression. I know what it feels like to have suicidal ideation. And I know what it feels like where I've hit my maximum and gone past my maximum. When I was suffering from the suicidal thoughts, that's when I quickly realized I had a major issue and I had to change. I realized that my main issue was my patient load. I own my practice, so I decreased my patient load almost immediately after that. And it took me about a month or so to get back to normal. And I was in a position where I could help myself very easily, but I realized that many of you don't have that option. So let's talk about what to do if you hate your job. Number one, be proactive, not passive. Your problems won't just disappear if you ignore them. So be proactive when you're in a situation like this. Recognize the real problem. You want to avoid just quitting and repeating the same process over and over. That's another thing that I see quite often uh, when talking to people where they, they don't recognize the main issue, where they just, they just don't enjoy what they're doing, and they keep repeating the process over and over and over. They, they do a job for about a year, get sick of it, move on to the next one, same process repeats. So ask yourself a few questions. Are you just overworked? Is it work or is it your personal life? Is it your boss? Is it the people that you're working with? It's your coworkers. Are you just bored? Are you not challenged? Are you taking care of yourself, getting enough sleep, eating right, working out, just taking care of yourself in general? All of these things make a difference. So when I say be proactive and not passive, what does that mean? Well, first, think about internal changes that you can make within the job that you're doing currently before you make drastic decisions and drastic moves. There's nothing wrong with talking to your boss about a new role, different challenges within the job itself, maybe something that uh, you've been thinking about that you, that you wanted to do but never had the balls to ask. Sometimes just changing your outlook and your mindset on your current job will help massively. Instead of just bitching and complaining about your job, well, try adjusting your mindset. Take it from a negative perspective and turn it into a positive. Negative thoughts. A negative thought loop will make your life miserable. I can't tell you how many times I've heard that from people. If you think that you're a victim, you're going to be a victim, period. If you want to be a winner, you need to think like a winner. Realize that you're not stuck at all. Most people in this situation are conflict averse. They don't embrace conflict. And that's why they get in these situations over and over and over. The most common example that I can think of is someone that's afraid to ask for more compensation. They're afraid to go to their, to their, to the superior, to their boss, to the owner and say, Hey, I need a raise. <laughs> Simple as that. It's three, three, three words, right? I need a raise. Oh, four words. <laughs> Oops, four words. So I need a raise. Simple as that. A lot of people are afraid to do that because they don't like conflict and they're afraid and they're very passive. Be proactive. If things don't work out, you're going to be just fine no matter what. Just by asking a question or saying a statement, that's not going to kill you, correct? Adjust the mindset. Abundance mindset is critical. So what do I mean when I say abundance mindset? In your head, think of this, this statement. There are plenty of jobs out there. I'm worth more than what I'm getting at my current position. I can do more. I need to be more challenged. Being comfortable isn't always a good thing. Being comfortable will make you bored. Or think of, I can find something better. 
Always. There's always, you always have options no matter what we're talking about, no matter what situation you're in, no matter how bad it seems. Here's another question. What are your skills? Can you repurpose yourself within the same field or the same role? Example. So an IT guy, the, um, the, the person that, uh, that sent me the message, he's an IT guy. He's got intimate knowledge of complex networking. Most companies, they're going to, they have a big need for that kind of skill and that kind of expertise. Many times computer systems can make or break you. It, whether you're talking technology, whether you're talking medicine, healthcare, anything, a computer networking system will make or break a company. Most companies realize that. So if you don't have the needed skills, it's never too late to learn. Never too late. Many times employers will assist you with the cost of an education if you just ask. Just ask, you know, go up to the your employer, your boss, what can I do for you? How can I make us more profitable? I'm willing to learn. Simple as that. That doesn't sound that difficult, does it? All you have to do is embrace the conflict and ask. Simple. Another option my personal favorite is embrace your entrepreneurial spirit. Can you start a secondary business with your skills, with your skill set? Starting a business is not as difficult as you think it is. First, recognize a need for certain services or products. If there's certain things that you can't find in your area, there's a need and there's, there's a want and there's a there's a market for that product and that service and <laughs> follow through whenever you try to do something, follow through with it, keep at it, diligence, discipline. But when it comes to starting a secondary project or secondary business, don't quit your primary gig until you know you can replace your current income with your secondary income. Know that that's, that that product or service is is wanted enough where you can pay your bills okay now if you already own your business you are in complete control of your destiny period that's the situation i was in personally adjust your schedule if you're overwhelmed that's exactly what i did i knew i was working too hard and i decreased my workload hire new help Delegate. Delegation is huge when it comes to business ownership. A lot of people can be too proud. They get too self-sufficient. They say, I can do it better. Well, that, that can drive you crazy and it could absolutely be detrimental when it comes to running a business. If you can delegate a certain task to someone else, that frees you up to do something else that's more profitable expansion into a different uh, area, learn different skills, all of those things. You can't do that if you're overworked or just simply back off, back off of your schedule that you're doing now. Uh, you can decrease your clinic hours, your patient load. That's what I did. I immediately felt relief when I did that. I felt like this weight was lifted off of me when I went back to a normal schedule at the time because I felt like I had to see patients to pay the bills. Well, I didn't. That particular tactic is especially true if you have your finances in order already, if they're well in hand. Your self-worth isn't your net worth. Money isn't everything. You don't, you don't need as much as you think you do. Look at your expenses rather than your income and try to work harder. Maybe you're spending too much. Maybe you're living beyond your means. Well, if you can decrease your bills and decrease your, your costs, you're going to make more. Your net is going to be higher. Sometimes it's just as simple as that. Maybe you're just spending too much and you need to really embrace the conflict again. Work smarter, not harder. How many times have you heard that? That's very, very true in a situation like this. So in summary, recognize that you need to change. What exactly is bothering you? Start internally, then move externally. Adopt an abundance mindset and think positively. Use your current skills. If you need new skills, it's never too late to learn. Start your own business. 
there's nothing like owning your own business. It's incredible. I recommend it for just about anybody. Not everybody can be a business owner, but it's really not as hard as you think it is. And delegate if you already own your business. So there you have it. There's plenty more to this, but that's that's the dumbed down version and the boiled down version of, of if you hate your job, this is what you should do. Please like, share, and subscribe if you like this content. Join my private Facebook group, Marriage Isn't Dead, uh, for exclusive content. It's free, free to play. Come on in. I welcome anyone. So until next time, be better than you were yesterday and be desirable.